hello everyone and welcome back to my channel thanks for coming back so in today's video i am going to show you how i turn this regular sweatshirt into this so keep watching if you want to know how to make something like this So I started off by going online and trying to find an image of what I wanted to make and because I don't like to break copyright I went on Etsy to see if I can purchase an image. I was looking for a head, an African head and I also looked at designs to see what it will look like on a t-shirt and then finally just like that I found my image. I was so excited when I found this image. So here I'm just covering my address because obviously when you purchased a PDF it will put all my details on the screen and I wasn't sure whether it's visible or it's too bright but I finally purchased it. It was just a dollar twenty cents and ooh it's going to my email. It's showing that I've been doing a lot of online shopping. Don't look. <laughs> and so once I downloaded the image all I did was print it out and the fun began. So my image is mainly dark and I realized that I ran out of black ink in my printer and so this is what it came out like. It's fine, like I'll use it, it's not a big deal. So let's quickly go through the material I'll use. Obviously I'll use my image that I printed and I have my sweatshirt. Remember when I bought this sweatshirt, I'm finally using it and for that headscarf I'm going to use this it used to be my skirt and then it became too small um, so I'm going to use that and then for my skin I bought this brown fabric for the hair I have these two pieces of black fabric I'm not too sure yet which one I will use to put my project together I'm going to use this it's called heat and bond and I will talk a bit more about it later and finally I have some marker pens and some drawstring I'm not sure if I'm going to use both of them so to start off my project, I have to make sure my iron is completely empty. There's no water in it. This is very important and it's one of the main instructions for using heat and bond. Yeah, I was just about to start and just go in and do what I normally do, but I realized this is a tutorial. So I'm going to take you step by step. Firstly, I'm cutting my image. So cut as precisely as you can around the image. So these are the three main shapes that I got from my image and so I'm going to use my heat and bond and it's heat and bond light sewable so I have to sew on it once I finish using it and with this heat and bond you want the rough side so this side that's a bit rough to go down on the fabric so I'm just placing it on the fabric I'll see how much I need and I'll just cut out so that I don't waste this heat and bond and once I have the shape for the first part, I will just iron and straighten my fabric first. Put the heat and bond light on my ironed fabric. And I just went and got this baking paper, which I don't really need at this point. I'm just getting it ready for the future. And I'm checking my instructions and it says hold the iron for two seconds. So one, two, one, two, one, two. And that's basically it. Next, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut out this piece of brown fabric that I'm going to use for my skin. And then I will take my pencil and trace out the design on paper. So I know people use heat and bond in different ways, but this is the way that works for me. And I found this to be easy and more precise. Some people like to draw on the heat and bond and then just press it on, but I prefer doing it this way. Now this image has an earring and I decided to cut out the earring so that when I put my brown fabric onto my hooded sweatshirt, this part takes on the color of the sweatshirt. And so this is what my image looks like once I've traced it. It doesn't really look like much, 
uh, but once I start cutting it, you'll see everything coming together. I will say, when you use Hit and Bond, try and use an old pair of scissors because I've been using Hit and Bond for quite a while and it has now damaged my nice pair of scissors. So I will repeat the exact same steps I used for the brown fabric on my other two images and fabric. Oh my gosh, here I was trying to decide whether I want the darker part of the fabric or the lighter part of the fabric. I ended up settling for the lighter part of the fabric because I just thought it would blend in well with the rest of the hooded sweatshirt. And wow guys, just wow. I just went and put that hit and bond onto this fabric. I'm so mad because it was facing the wrong way. So I have to just cut that piece out, but I will use it later on. I don't like wasting. So make sure when you use the hit and bond, the rough side goes on the back of your fabric so that the nice side, um, the main side goes in front. So I hope I explain it well. This is not a sponsored video. I've been using heat and bond and there's a few types of heat and bond. So when you buy it, make sure you buy the right one for your project. I'll leave a link in the description below from the Amazon store where I purchased mine. So here I'm doing the last material and I just quickly check to see if it's facing the right way. And it is, so I proceed to do the exact same steps. So the cutting is done. Here are my three pieces. I'm just assembling everything together. I've never actually done this before, so I'm really excited to see what it comes out like. And I'm taking my sweatshirt and I'm going to just iron and straighten the sweatshirt. And then I'm placing it to see, oh my gosh, look at that. The colors are divine. I am so, so, so happy. And then when I put the last piece, I realized I want to trim the hair to look more realistic. So I trimmed it to make it look more realistic and then I decided to do the earring I cut out the earring part on the brown fabric so once I'm happy with my shapes I peel off the back of the heat and bond and what's left is this shiny residue that sticks so that's what makes the fabric stick onto my sweatshirt and then I lay everything down and check on the proportions and where it's laying and once I'm happy I put my baking paper and then I hold my iron for about six seconds and that is it my design is popping and it's stuck onto my sweatshirt it don't, it don't move. move you hear what I'm telling you it don't move I'm thinking a highlight around the image will make it perfect I've decided to put some shoulder pads on my hooded sweatshirt and I just tried it on so that I know exactly where the shoulder pads are supposed to go and <laughs> hey, look what you me do. Stay away from me. <laughs> so guys this is my honest reaction like I've never done this kind of pattern before as I mentioned and so my reaction is exactly how I feel I shock myself all the time and I'm trying to hold my composure while I draw these shoulder pads. Now using the sizing that I drew on my elbow, I'm just sketching out what my shoulder pad will look like. And that's the piece of fabric that I made a mistake on earlier. All I'm doing now is folding it in half and then I'm going to cut out my two shoulder pads. And once that's done, I'll use the same method and then I'll stick it on my elbow part of the hooded sweatshirt.
and then finally I've decided to put the same fabric on the inside of my hoodie and it's just basic so I will actually sew this part I won't stick it on so I just need to make sure I cut out um, a shape that matches my hoodie and then I'll sew it on my on the inside of my hoodie Okay, so here I'm going to start with my hoodie. I'm just sewing the two sides of the hoodie together. Next, I fold the seam so that it's nice and neat. And before I sew, I just decided to change the thread so that I put yellow thread so it blends well with the hoodie. And I always say this, I am not a professional tailor, seamstress or dressmaker. I only know the basic. I didn't even do any sewing classes, any fashion and fabric or any textile classes. So all I'm doing is just basic sewing using my basic knowledge and basic sewing skills. And then using some pins, I pin my piece of African fabric onto my hooded sweatshirt. And once I'm happy with where everything is, I will stitch it on. Seeing how nicely I stitched it on, I just figured I should have done this on the outer side and instead the fabric is on the inside of the hoodie. It's nicer than what I thought it would be so next time when I do something like this, I'll put the fabric on the outside of the hoodie so it's more visible. Finally, I'm putting the pins on the neck part of my hooded sweatshirt so I can stitch the fabric down on that part and that will be my hooded complete.
guys just check this out look how nice it is it's so precise and it's so nice the colors are blending really well like i'm thinking of buying another hooded sweatshirt exactly this color and do it differently but this is what it is and i'm happy with the result so here i'm quickly changing my thread because i'm going to now sew around my head part so because i use heat and bond light i need to sew around the design and now i'm just thinking the situation should i do a zigzag pattern or should i just go around it and i've decided to go around my hair first and do a zigzag pattern at least that is black and the thread is black so if i make a mistake no one will see and i was trying to show you exactly what i was doing but i didn't position my camera well but Hopefully you will see on the other sides, it's just a zigzag pattern. So I ended up doing a zigzag pattern on most of the design except the face. When I got to the face, I just went and I did a straight stitch. this is not a sponsored video i've been using heat and bond and there's a few types of heat and bond so when you buy it make sure you buy the right one for your project in this video i used heat and bond light which requires you to sew your design to make sure it's secure a lot of people that use this heat and bond use it for quilting i buy mine from spotlight or sometimes i buy it from amazon like when we were in lockdown because spotlight was not delivering where i stayed i purchased mine from amazon i'll leave a link in the description below from the amazon store where i purchased mine so before you purchase any heat and bond material make sure you know what it's used for some of it is for crafting and some of it is for applying on to your material so just make sure you read the directions i'll try and show you the two types of heat and bonds that i use next year i'll be doing a lot more of these projects if you like this video make sure you put any questions down in the comment section or you let me know if you've tried using heat and bond check out my other videos as well so i've put up a few other videos one where i did a hooded sweatshirt for my husband and then two other ones for myself changing the thread again because i'm going to do the final part which is my shoulder pads and for that i had to unstitch part of my arm so that i can actually sew properly not the whole arm but just part of it and once that was done i just went around the shoulder pad and i did a zigzag stitch
so that's my second shoulder pad done and that is what the stitching looks like and once I'm done I just take my hoodie and I put it inside out and then I stitch the arm part that I unstitched earlier I just sew that part shut and that is it for the sewing Guys, you know I'm a bit extra. I decided to go around my design with my marker pen. So this, these are fabric marker pens and once you write on it, it won't come out. So I realized, and this can happen to anyone, my image, once I cut it, it was back to front, which doesn't really matter. But if you're doing something like a country map or logo, make sure you have it facing the right side. And so all I'm doing now is just putting the finer details using my fabric marker and then I'll also oh I oh I put my fabric marker on that part oh my gosh how am I gonna get it out because it's just going to stay like that forever so anyway I'm just going around my design and I did this with my other projects as well so I did one with an African map and I went around with my marker pen and when you see once you go around, it gets a more defined shape. That's me putting it on and you can clearly see the black highlighted marker pen is more defined. I actually like it. You can leave it the way it was. And so this is my hooded sweatshirt. I'm just gonna let you watch me. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. I am so in love with this. If you love this video, please give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs up guys don't just watch and not give it a thumbs up if you also want to know more or if you have any questions put them in the comment section below and this is my channel guys diy with tanaka lily i have so many videos check my other videos out and let me know what you want me to do next year